So we finished pre-mixing all of our pigments and just before we start the application of our epoxy, we want to make sure that we have all of the tools necessary for a successful installation. So the first thing we have is our um, spike shoes. We've got our magic trial squeegee. We've got an 18 inch um, roller and we've also got a four inch roller for the edges and we're also wearing some gloves. All of these things can be found in our uh, installation toolkit um, that you can find on our website. And we've also done one last inspection of the floor, making sure that there's no dust or dirt that's gotten onto the surface. If it has, we can use some denatured alcohol on a microfiber cloth or applicator in order to clean that up. But this floor looks like it's in really good shape. And so we'll go ahead now and we'll combine the B into our A and go ahead and pour the floor. All right, so now that we've determined that we have everything in place, we have our tools ready, we've done an examination of the surface that we're about to cover, there's no dirt, there's no dust, we're now ready to combine the B part into our A part so that way we can pour the metallic epoxy floor. Now once again, this bucket contains two gallons of part A and we have already pre-mixed our silver metallic pigment in the bucket. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to combine the uh, one gallon, this is each a half a gallon can here. We're gonna combine the one gallon of part B hardener into our two gallons. Again, it's that two to one mix, two parts A to one part B. We're gonna set our timer for three minutes and we're going to mix the epoxy at a moderate speed. So I'll go ahead and we'll start the timer. We'll dump in our B. And now we've just added a full gallon of part B to our two gallons of part A. Now, just as a reminder, this process of combining the B into the A only starts when you're ready to actually start installing the floor. And we're only working with one kit at a time. So just to explain, let's say you had five or six kits of epoxy that was required in order to do a large space, we're still only going to be working with one kit of epoxy at a time. So you'll have your kits with the A part sitting off to the side, but you'll only be working with one kit where you're combining the B into the A at a time, and that's to give us the maximum amount of working time. Because if you were to go ahead and add all of the Bs to all of your kits, that's going to start the curing process. You also have three gallons of epoxy in a plastic bucket, so it's in a mass. It's going to start generating its own heat, and that epoxy within a matter of minutes is going to start to get hard on you. It'll start to smoke. Uh, it'll get chunky, and uh, literally uh, within a matter of minutes, it will be a block sitting in the bottom of your bucket. So this is our first three-gallon kit. It's going to do our first 180 square feet, and that's all we're mixing up right now with the bee hardener. So again, we're mixing it at a moderate speed with our drill. We're not uh, whipping any excess air into it. And then about halfway through, we're gonna take our tool and we're gonna scrape the sides of the bucket just to make sure that none of that B component is stuck to the side of the bucket. And then we'll go ahead and finish mixing. We've also made sure that our epoxy was stored at the proper temperature. Um, it's not too hot, not too cold. We're storing it at room temperature uh, in the low 70s is optimum. And that way, um, it's not already hot once it gets into the bucket. So again, speeding up that curing process. We want as much working time as possible. So we're gonna follow all of the parameters as far as uh, temperature and um, uh, mixing go. So there's our three minutes and now our product is mixed and it's ready to be applied on the floor.